be seated. Um, welcome to the 2014 opening ceremonies. We're going to be honoring we're going to be honoring our scholars for the 2014-2015 school year. Um, I'd like to take this time to acknowledge some guests and friends that we have in the audience. I know um, Leah Metz of the NAACP is here. Doris De Los Santos of PPSD. Um, Joseph uh, DePita of PPSD is here. Um, we have uh, Oniva Housing here, so thank you guys for coming. Um, <laughs> the purpose of tonight's ceremony is to reintroduce the young scholars back into the community after going through a two week vigorous rite of, rites of passage where they were challenged, divided, um, and most importantly, they conquered. Um, so I would like to thank you all for coming out tonight. Um, I would like to bring up our first guest from the King's Cathedral um, Choir singing the Black National Anthem. So I would like if everyone could please rise.
Thank you, Peter. Um, we receive much support from our state officials, politicians, and other political figures. As mayor, he carried the banner for youth built positive province as we grew from a small workforce development program in Harleyville to the alternative program in Providence, serving high school students and GED students, the young and GED diploma for young people. When you think of the champion, you can always count on Congressman David Cicilline. So if you can give a, uh, a big clap to Congressman David Cicilline. Thank you very much. I'm really delighted to be here first. I know this is the first time the opening ceremonies have been open to the public, so I feel very honored to be part of a historic group. Uh, and to begin by saying thank you to Anthony Hubbard and the incredible staff at Youthville. Let's give them a round of applause. You already know this, but you will be surrounded by a group of young leaders, uh, Anthony and his staff, who really believe in you, who know that you're going to be a success uh, in this program. And so I just want to thank them because part of the success of Youthville is the great leaders uh, and the great staff that have been part of this since uh, from the very beginning. Um, but I really want to be here to congratulate you. Uh, this is a rigorous program. You've shown the maturity of judgment to realize that this is a good step for you in terms of furthering your education and also developing skills that, are, that will be helpful should you decide to pursue certain careers. And um, it's a, a tough program. It requires real determination, commitment, real focus. Uh, and I'm here really to say congratulations for the good sense, the good judgment you've already demonstrated to wish you well in this program. To also acknowledge the people who have helped you get to this point. Uh, nobody sort of makes the journey of life alone, so I know there are family members and friends who have encouraged you and will support you throughout the program. It's important to be mindful of that and be grateful to them for the support they provided you. Uh, but I've seen the tremendous impact you feel has had on our community uh, in really helping to build a stronger community and the really important impact it has on individuals as you build uh, yourself and become a more productive and better contributing adult in the community. So congratulations on what I know will be a very successful journey. We all look forward to watching you as you progress this program and make a real difference in your own lives, make a real difference in this city, and make a real difference in our state. So congratulations. I'd like to thank um, Cicilline for acknowledging the staff. I meant to acknowledge them, but I didn't acknowledge them, so I'm going to do it right now. Um, program Director Anthony Hubbard. Lead <laughs> Teacher Michael Delaney. <laughs> Associate Director Robert Nyquist. <laughs> Director of Transitional Services, Joanne Deborah. <laughs> Construction Manager, Ken Short. Head of School of Lydia Dickerson. <laughs> Business Manager Rhoda Gonsal. <laughs> Math and Science Teacher Christine Karen. <laughs> Construction Trainer Cesar Ramirez. <laughs> Student Support Coordinator Demita Dell. <laughs> Middle School Coordinator Elijah Cross. to Bridget Webster, she's our intern this year. Um, I'd like to bring up um, a friend of mine. Um, we've been friends for a few years. Um, she's had family go through the program and I've known her to be a great writer and I was honored when she agreed to write something for you all tonight. So um, I'll bring up Miss Christy Lynn Waite. So this poem is called Words. 
words. Words can destroy you, annoy you, immortalize you, demoralize you, frighten and brighten you. They are a huge responsibility. So when you choose to speak, do so with moral intentions. Speak with knowledge and confidence. Be unforgettable with your knowledge. Treat dictionaries with homage. Be wiser than your age. Live more by the turn of a page than the end of a war that a perfect smile can reach. Words are all we have for each other. Words are our ultimate lovers. Worry about who and when your words will affect. Wonder if they'll do damage or if they'll protect. Wonder, every day, what will become of your words. When your bones have deossified and crumbled into the earth, when the weeds have seeped into your ashes, will you be remembered by your words and actions? Will your words bring clarity to those who are lost? Or will you pay the ultimate cost and be forgotten without a cause? My mother once told me that words are like the sea. They ebb from your brain and flow to your lips. They swell up your tongue and crash onto someone's ears when you speak. She said, so have something to say whenever you converse, because you never know who is listening, because you never know who is shotgun in a hearse, and who you can rescue simply by your words. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. Um, our next speaker, um, he's, he's, he's good on the mic. He actually graduated this past June, and we met him two years ago, and he, he was rough around the edges, and he too had to go through a transformation, a, a right passage, in order to get to where he is today. Um, he's a leader, he, he's grown in the past few years, He's a brother to me now, and I'm honored to have him come speak with you. Your Divinity School coordinator, Mr. Elijah Cross. How's everyone doing today? Right. I ain't loud enough. How's everybody doing today? Right. There we go, there we go. Well, my, my name is Elijah Cross, a UVL graduate and former class president. Having ambition and being dedicated are the keys to being a successful student here at YBP. It's time to leave your problems at the door and your differences on the street. Here at YBP, we are a family. We, and as a community, we will strive for greatness. So now it's time to become men and women and make getting your high school diploma or GED the most important thing in your life. But it all depends on you. Stepping out of your, com stepping out of your comfort zone will be the first tough task. Entering new environments can be overwhelming and ultimately scary for some. When I first entered youth building, I was in the same boat as all of you. I really didn't buy into the program's format until I realized this was my last chance to obtain my education. I was a struggling high school student searching for guidance and youth building paved the road for me to begin my journey. Even though there was time where I wanted to quit on myself, the program never quit on me. And I will be reminded that I need a YBP to become successful. You built taught me a lot about myself and how all the negativity in my life was holding me back from becoming the best I can be. This voyage will be long and tough at times, but you are gonna love every minute, every minute of it. It's a move that you won't regret. It's time to better yourself and make changes to the lifestyle that you have lived so far. Positive thinking is gonna take you to the finish line to the success that you deserve. Hard work pays off, but if you're, willing, if you're not willing to work hard, success will be difficult to achieve. As anything worth having is the result of determination and hard work. Now it's time to step up and fight for your education. As a community, we will conquer this battle together, rebuilding and uniting to become unstoppable. Let's believe in each other and rise together as a collective, all for one, one for all, and achieve the goals that we all have set for ourselves and all become successful young men and women that we all want to.
next speaker, I'm, I'm gonna try to, when people ask me about what is different about this program compared to a traditional high school, um, I always try to find something that's not, you know, so sad and, and but I don't know anything else but that. Um, I didn't go to school in, in Providence, Rhode Island. I'm from New York. And when I came out here, Youth Pro Providence was the first school and the only school I've ever, I ever attended besides CCRI. And I didn't come with, you know, too much baggage, but, you know, growing up in foster care, I always wanted to have a family, to have people love me for who I am. Um, so when people ask me why youth building, why does it work, my answer is always the support, the love and support. Um, this year hasn't been my favorite year, personally. Um, and I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna drag it out and tell you two small, two instances that happened. In February, I was at home one night watching TV, and I'm not gonna lie, I was watching Basketball Wives. <laughs> And my sister kept calling me, she's in New York, and I'm thinking that she's calling for money, and I'm like, I'm not gonna answer it, I'm not gonna answer it. Um, so then she just texted me, and the text message said, Grandma died. I live alone, so I was on the floor crying, didn't know what to do. Um, I wound up just going for a walk. Um, I wound up calling Ms. Gonzalez, actually, and at 11.30 p.m., Ms. Gonzalez drove from Pawtucket to pick me up. And she just drove, we just drove around. Um, we wound up in Burger King. Um, I ate fries, she ate pies. And she, she just was the shoulder for me to cry on. The very next day, I woke up, I thought it was a dream, didn't know what was happening. I woke up, put on pants, looked at my phone, and realized it was real. The first place I went to was to Ms. Joanne's office. And she allowed me to just cry. Um, if she didn't know what to say, she just allowed me to just cry. Um, I went to Rob and I cried. I went to Caesar and I cried and I cried to all these people and all they, and they didn't have the answers, they just let me cry on their shoulders and that was um, what I needed at the time. So two months before my grandmother passed, I was at home watching TV. I don't know what I was watching. And I was getting another phone call from my sister. I'm like, what's going on? So I answered, and she said, Dad died. And at that moment, it was, I, I froze. I literally fell to the floor, cried, and didn't know what to do. Um, the very next day, I was trying to get my thoughts together, and one of the things that popped in my head was, who's going to help me? who's gonna teach me how to be a man, who's gonna help me transition, and who's gonna help me through my passage. And I didn't know who I was gonna turn to. Again, the staff at Youth Build were there for me, but still I was looking for someone to be that support and that mentor for me. Um, there's been one person who has, come, grown to, has become very close to my heart, and. He has become a father to me, a big brother, and a mentor. He has helped me financially, emotionally, and just been there for me no matter what. If I needed to pay rent, if I needed to pay a gaslight, and he would say yes even two minutes after he said his favorite statement of the year, we're in a deficit, he would still get that check and he would help me pay my bills. <laughs> so to the fathers who fathers, brothers, grandfathers, uncles who work 24 seven and feel like they are missing out, missing out the time with their sons and they feel like you know they're not gonna be there at the basketball game, there will be a man sitting there supporting your son. To the mothers, grandmothers, sisters, aunts who feel like they're in a, in a war with the streets trying to put their sons in, there is a man that will hold your hand, that will help you pull him in to where he needs to be and that person is Mr. Anthony Hubbard. He is. He is the director of this program. He's brought it to where it is now. Um, and because I sit with him so so late at night, I know some of the plans of where it's going. And um, 
he's just he's he's a role model. He'll be there for your sons and your daughters, and he'll guide them to where they need to be. So, without further ado, um, Mr. Anthony Hubbard. Good evening. Good evening. What time is it? What time is it? You feel are you ready? You feel ready. Who are we? show you uh, another UPO graduate who transitioned to staff what they can do. As many times as he asked me for advice and opinions on what the program should be and how it should be set up, I just sat there and stared at him and said, you figured it out. And he did. Um, but he asked me, I really didn't want to talk um, this evening, but he said that I had to offer some um, director's words. Um, so, First, I want to say thank you to our guests. Thank you, um, Providence Public Schools, for the continued support. Thank you for our friends and family and staff that makes my job easy. Um, and thank you for the, um, the community. Uh, and thank you, young people, for making the choice to knock on the door or ring the doorbell at 66 Chafee Street to hear Ms. Dee say, who is it? <laughs> and you say, I want to, I want to fly to you, Bill. Um, and you may have not known what you was getting yourself into, but you came up from steps and you took the first um, step by taking that pen in your hand and signing your name um, to your application. But I want to speak tonight about a topic um, or subject, there's no time to take your time. Uh, see, if you Bill had taken some folks' advice about four years ago, we would have not been here today celebrating yet another opening of another school year. We are often told to leave well alone, alone, to take our time and let things happen organically. Don't fight the system, they say. Well, obviously, I'm a little hard-headed. Um, because we fought to form a partnership with the Providence Public School Department to able to allow students not to drop out of school, but to be afforded an opportunity to get their high school diploma as well as continue to serve our traditional students. We immediately incorporated a post-secondary education initiative to put students on a fast track to college and folks on the sidelines said, whoa, take your time, <laughs> be easy. We didn't listen. Um, there's a sense of urgency that we have. See, um, what people don't realize is that we and you, we all fight in this war. We are losing some of our young soldiers on a daily basis. We don't have time to sit back and wait and watch for what the outcome could be. We have to take matters in our own hands. We must remember the soldiers that came before us, the great revolutionists, the educators, the civil rights activists, the community leaders, and just some good old people who had a passion in their heart. That for the good fight, we must have the same fire in our spirit they had, which gave them the strength to move mountains when mountains just seemed too big to be moved. We, we, as we prepare to induct you, young warrior scholars, into the Youthville family tonight, I want you to understand that what you have signed up for. See, these young people are committing themselves to change. See, change not only to themselves, but change to the communities. These young people will experience more academic work this year than they probably experienced in all their academic career. These minds will be pushed to the limits, characters will be built, the visions enhanced, but most of all, these young people will not have time to take their time because there's much to do. We have houses to build, community gardens to develop, beds to construct, lessons to learn, trips to take, uh, panels to host, leadership activities to participate in, mentor relationships to uh, foster, friendships to bond, tests to take, projects to do, and projects to do, and some more projects to do. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of projects. While upholding the youth build philosophy, meaning we will do all this with appreciation, love, dignity, and respect. See, now, you see, 
when I say we don't have time to take our time, this doesn't mean that we just spin our wheels going to just keep on going for going safe. We do take time to reflect and have fun. We laugh a little and we cry a little. That's what family do. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I met you guys and we began the rites of passage process, which ended on Saturday around noon. And after two weeks of learning about our past and understanding our present as we work towards our future, connecting with each other, learning of each other's cultures, establishing our personal pledges as we decided on our warrior scholars' identities. Um, I just realized, and don't tell this to me, class 17 or 16 or 15 or 14, but this seemed to be the best class that you feel had inducted up to this point. Um, <laughs> Don't tell. <laughs> um, I wish I could tell the audience about this transformation that took place over the two week period, and especially, gentlemen, what happened Friday night. You know, that was a powerful, life changing experience that I know I will take with me to my grave, and it brought joy to my heart to see that transformation happen right there in front of my face. But just know, in a short period of time, some of these young folks have begun to develop adult begun to develop into adulthood with a new purpose and a mission. The spark was lit and you can see the fire in the eyes. They will become the force to be reckoned with. And you've been warned because if you're not moving forward, you best get out of their way because we have no time to take time. Uh, they have work to do. See they are becoming the generals and lieutenants in this war. They are taking matters in their own hands and saving the communities while rebuilding those same communities. They are learning from their losses they are faced with and preparing to come together to fight against social, political, educational, economic, and spiritual inequities that threaten to destroy us as people. They are beginning to build the foundations to which they will construct their future. And it is our job to teach them the skills that they need to build a strong, sound structure to exist in. But we have to make sure that the foundation is just right. And I'm gonna close, but I can't close without going to this story I remember way back in Bible study about the wise man and the foolish man and how the wise man built his house upon the rock while the foolish man built his house on the sand because you know what happens if you don't have a strong foundation and when the storms come and the floods rise, what's gonna to happen to the foolish man's house is gonna go off to sea, but the man that built his house upon the rock, his house will weather the storm. See, you know that sometimes the house may get a little beaded and it may go in the wind, but guess what? Tomorrow when the sun come up, that house will still be standing. So we don't keep you in the behind. Do know. Trouble don't last always. You gotta go ahead. And when your hand is come knocking at your door, if you have a strong foundation, you ain't got to open your door. You like me, play now. Yeah? <laughs> but they can't knock the door down and get able to come to put themselves into themselves. So let me tell you something. When you learn how to build your house, you know it has to be on that strong foundation. And when the troubles come, because life, I wish I could tell you, will always be good. But we know it's not true. But you have something to stand on. And I know I stand on the rock. And if you don't know what the rock I'm talking about, that's okay. Come see me afterwards. I'll explain to you the rock I'm talking about. But I want you to be a wise man. And when, you, when your house is built, because one thing I learned about that story, things was in past tense. He said the wind blew. The rain came. That just lets me know trouble is not going to last always. And when I tell your parents when you go, I say, you know what? I know they've been some trouble. But work with us. It's not going to happen overnight. We rebuilding this house. We went out the shore. We grabbed all the pieces. We put it back together. But the difference is we're taking it up the mountain. And we're putting it on the rock. And we're going to teach them how to build their house. See, we're going to change some of the, the, the weapons you have. And we're going to put a hammer in your hand. And it's not about rebuilding 
the community because we want you to be construction workers. We want you to be leaders in the community and understand what it takes. See, if you start making your communities around you look better, then maybe people in the neighborhood start feeling better and taking pride in what they do. And when you drive past some of these neighborhoods five, 10, 20 years from there, and I see you go through the door all the time and say, I built that house. I built that playground. You see those kids over there playing? I did all that. This is somebody that said they was a high school dropout. They was never going to amount to anything. But you guess what? I joined one of the best movements ever. You go. It's not a school. It's not a program. It's a movement. Because we're going to keep on moving. You did my way. You best sit down. Tonight he is here to show his support, his support and provide words of encouragement to our young warrior scholars. Please welcome School Board President Keith Oliveira. Thank you, Elijah. Um, while I appreciate uh, the invitation to be here with you tonight, this was a setup. <laughs> because how do you follow how, how are you going to be on a program following Anthony Huffman and expect to uh, bring words of wisdom um, as profound as his? But I'm certainly going to try. Uh, thank you for the invitation to be here, uh, you Bill. First of all, I want to acknowledge Congressman Cicilline. Thank you for being here, Congressman, for all you do, uh, being a trusted voice for the people of the First District of Rhode Island in Washington, D.C., and all you do for us and provide that voice for us. So thank you, Congressman, for being here. Uh, I want to also obviously recognize uh, Mr. Hubbard and the staff and faculty and all you do and the commitment and that you and the dedication that you demonstrate uh, for these young people and for the hard work and providing them the opportunities that they so richly deserve and for the work that you do. So I can thank you for what you do, Mr. Hubbard and the staff and faculty of you. I also want to give a special thank you to Elijah Stevenson for the kind courtesy of being here with you today and for the invitation that uh, you extended to me. Of course, welcome and congratulations to the young people who will serve the benefit uh, from this, for this wonderful program. And it is an honor to be here with you. It's an honor to be here with you because I am a believer and supporter of you, Bill. And I am a believer and supporter of the opportunity that you Bill provides for young people like this and for the uh, growth that they will show over the years and the time with this program. And it's something that I've always been uh, a fan of and I uh, support the work of this organization. For the past three and a half years, I've served on the Friday School Board. Three years I've been blessed to serve um, as board president. Um, most of the time, uh, I enjoy the reward of serving on the school board. Sometimes, however, I look at myself and I think, what the heck am I doing? Why am I doing this work? But I do this work because I believe in being part of decision making that affords opportunities for young people like you. One of the things I've come to learn, having served on the school board all this time, I've come to learn that the schools alone, um, the classrooms alone, and the work of preparing young people for their future. It goes beyond just the work that we do in the classroom. It goes beyond the work that happens in schools. That work of preparing young people such as yourself extends into the community. And it extends into the community through work like the program that you're in now. Because uh, the work of preparing you for your future has to expose you to what the future has to offer. And it has to expose you to the skills that you're going to need to be productive members of this society. And that's why I believe in youth because youth build does that, that, that work. I'm proud to say that I'm happy to be a partner 
with this organization, and I'm one of the types of person I like to put my money where the mouth where my mouth is. I'm happy to say that um, as a partner with PTSD, myself as president of the Providence School Board, uh, I'm proud to say just just a month ago, uh, we approved a contract with Newfield to invest 300, over $320,000 into this program in our partnership. And we do that as an investment. That is not, we do this as an investment. It is an investment in you. It is an investment in which we are making a statement. We are stating that we believe in you. We are believing that what you have to offer, and we're willing to put the money in to make sure that you get what you need. And you feel does that. You feel there's an investment in your educational opportunity. It is an investment in your workforce and workplace development skills. It is an investment in preparing you for what you're going to do and the contributions that you will make in this community once you become young adults and productive members of our society. And I expect that there will be a return on the investment that we are making in you through those contributions of what you will do and on behalf of our community. Uh, you feel is an asset. It is a valuable program in our community. Um, it allows you not only to earn your high school diploma and your GED, but it exposes you right, to the college experience and classes that you might take at CCRI. It exposes you to the workforce development skills and work readiness skills that you're going to need to do. So, so when you do become of age and you're, been, and you're up there in the workforce that you know how to comport yourself and you know how to work hard and you know what it takes to be successful. Uh, most importantly, uh, you feel prepares you to make wise, responsible decisions. One thing you have to come to learn as you become young adults, you have to be accountable for who you are. And you have to be accountable for the decisions that you make. And I am uh, of the belief that youth build through its rights of passage helps to teach you that. And uh, that is a valuable, valuable uh, lesson to be learned. And it's something that we at the Providence School Department are uh, worth uh, investing in. Now, I will say that as much as Youth Build is a valuable program, it is a program that we can't take for granted. Programs like this, we cannot take for granted. These partnerships, partnerships that we have with Youth Build and the Father School Department, these partnerships are here for a reason. They are the result of decisions that people make. And those decisions, we have to make sure, are made by people who understand the value and the importance of making these types of investments. And we cannot take that, uh, make those, take those decisions uh, for granted. Now, I say that for a reason, because one of the things that I would like to do tonight is to get you to understand that you being in this program, while it is benefit beneficial to you as an individual, there is also a larger um, responsibility. And that is to prove the value and worth of this program. And we're about to go, we're in the middle of an election season. Congressman, you'll um, understand this quite well. We are about to, within the next six weeks, we're going to be electing who will lead our state. Who will lead us both at the state level, to the governor and the general assembly, at the city level, we're going to be electing a new mayor and the city council. And one thing that I want you to understand that, and this, these types of elections have consequences. And the consequences can be summed up in two words. Who decides? Who decides who gets what and why? Who decides what issues take priority? Do your issues take priority? Do other people's issues take priority? Who decides who makes those decisions? Who decides where we are going to invest our money? Do I invest it in youth field? Do I invest it somewhere else? There are always going to be decisions. One thing that you have to understand, young people, is that there are always going to be people sitting in a room somewhere. It could be in Congress, it could be in City Hall, it could be in some conference room somewhere. People are making decisions that are going to affect your life. And so we have to be, you as con uh, uh, pe young people, have to be conscious of that. And one of the things about being in youth field is you have to make it worthwhile 
for people to understand when they're sitting in these rooms making these decisions that your program, this program, is worthy of the investment that we want to make in you. Uh, there are some real consequences to these types of decisions. So I'm gonna break it down to you for some, some of these types of decisions. Who decides whether or not we're gonna invest the millions of dollars that are necessary to upgrade our city schools in order that young people don't have to sit in the classroom the next week, right? Who makes those decisions? Who decides whether or not we're gonna invest in programs like youth health? Who decides whether or not we're gonna maintain a valuable community resource like keeping open a neighborhood pool? Who makes those decisions? These are critical decisions that we have to begin asking ourselves now. These are just some very real points that questions that have real consequential answers. And so now, if you listen to what's going on, if you listen to what's happening in our elections today, everything is about jobs, jobs, jobs. Rhode Island has one of the highest unemployment rates in the country, and in some areas of our communities, like South Providence, uh, the state unemployment is about 7.7%. In some of our communities, the unemployment rate is three times that. There are some areas in South Providence where the unemployment rate is about 30%. And so we have to begin questioning, why is that? Why aren't we making investments that are gonna address that? And programs like Youth Build are an important answer to that question. It's important because we have to be begin preparing people for the jobs of the future. We have to be preparing people for the skills that are necessary to improve the employment opportunity for kids like you in our community. So your being here, your being here, uh, is to demonstrate that programs like this work, and that programs like this will have a broader impact on the opportunities, not just for you, but opportunities for kids that are coming after you. Okay, there is a responsibility here, and I want to, I don't want here to leave here without you understanding um, what that responsibility is. Now, there are those of us, with Congressman Cicilline and I, and those of us who advocate for more opportunities like this. And we go to the Congressman's case in the Hall of Congress, the State House City Council, what have you. We make the argument that investing in young people like you is a worthwhile investment. And we will continue to make that argument. We will continue to advocate on your behalf. But you also, you too, have a responsibility. Your responsibility is to prove that we are, that this is a worthwhile investment and that the work that you feel does and, and the lessons that it teaches you and the skills that it develops in you will have a long-term benefit for us all. That is your responsibility. Uh, I understand, to, understand this as well, that the work that you're going to do is going to be a grind, okay? We all have a grind. Your grind, you have to first understand that a grind is not a short-term hustle. A grind is a long-term plan. A grind is goal-oriented. A grind is hard work. It's putting in that work. Okay? Stay on your grind. Stay on your grind because that grind is going to pay off. And, uh, it's going to pay off for all of us. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave you with these final thoughts. First thing I wanna tell you is recognizing the responsibility that you have to all of it and, and, and um, taking advantage of this opportunity you have, take advantage of it to its fullest. Take advantage of it to its fullest because opportunities like this, like I said, are the result of people who are advocating on your behalf to make sure that you have every opportunity to succeed in life. And you, have, and you have to have the skills that are necessary to be productive members of our society. So don't underestimate the value of programs like this. And I know that people like Mr. Hubbard, uh, that they instill in you the understanding and belief that there is something bigger than you in this work. And what, what is bigger than you is the opportunity that you have and the commitment that you have to make uh, to your community productive members of our community. Be engaged. Understand the bigger picture. 
understand how you feel and what you're doing fits into a larger, uh, a larger dynamic beyond just yourself. You will, as individuals, will gain as individuals through the skills you'll develop, through the education that you'll be provided, but there's a larger goal here, and that larger goal is the benefit of the community. Understand that investments must be made and that our people who are making decisions about whether or not we will invest in you. Be aware of that and comport yourself in that way and be understanding of that. And when you do come up of a certain age, make sure that you understand who is being asked to lead and make the decision. Yes, and you get up there and you register and you vote and you make your voice heard. Be engaged, be informed, be involved. Uh, finally, let me say this. Uh, being a successful person in life um, is a matter of choices that you make. You have conscious decisions that you make. And you have made a wise decision to involve yourself in a program such as this because this program is going to set you on a path that is going to give you real opportunity. So you've made a wise decision to be here and to be in front of me today. Continue to make wise decisions. Continue to make wise choices. Avoid the consequences and the risks that are out there and the temptations that are out there that can derail you from this path. Because I, I know, as much as anyone, I know that there is risk out there. There is risk that will try to drive you off your path. Stay focused, stay on the grind, stay involved, stay engaged, and stay with this program, and you will do well. Thank you for having me. <laughs>
So the next part of this um, this evening is going to be um, a pinning ceremony. And what these pins mean is that what these pins mean is that you will be new members to the community. You're being reintroduced to the community. You guys just went through a two week mental toughness period. We ended it in situate. You guys went through some things. And so as you come back into the community, you are new people, still in transition, working on everything, but um, this means you're going, you are on your way. So first row, can please rise. Mr. Tayshawn Warren, Mr. John Cornish, Mr. Gelson Ruiz, Mr. Stacy Johnson, Mr. Armando Mendez, Mr. Sean Clark, Mr. Miles Clark. Mr. Anton Santos, Mr. Devontae Johnson White, Ms. Jasmine Loriano, Mr. Mark Smith, Mr. Josue Echevarria, Ms. Naomi Fuentes. Mr. Patrick Shea, <laughs> Mr. Jose Matos, Mr. Chang Thor, Mr. Shantra Shrav, Ms. Diamond Small, Ms. Jennifer Lopez, Ms. Monisha Bailey, Mr. Jose Martinez, Mr. Julio de Vila, Mr. Craig Williams, Ms. Jamie Bailey, Mr. Tyler Bergeron, Ms. Kimberly Gonzalez, Mr. Nehemi Theodore Jr. Ms. Makia Bailey, Ms. Taquasia Gadsden, Mr. Brian Felix, Mr. Dario Trinidad. Staff, I need you guys to join in. We're gonna say this youth go for last like we never said it before. So if Mr. Echevarria can start us off, you can move up, staff. I'm gonna get off the mic.
As the students and staff exit the auditorium, I want to thank all the family, friends, supporters who came out tonight to support our, our young scholars, and um, we'll be seeing you again soon.